I don't know if subcultures are dead or not, but now they certainly are different. When we talk about subcultures, people may think of punks, goths, metalheads, tets, or hippies, but the definition of this word is much broader. Before we start, I'm not sure if my voice sounds a bit weird right now or not. But the thing is that I haven't fully recovered from my cold yet, so so if it sounds weird, then yeah, just so you know. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, a subculture is a way of life, customs, and ideas of a particular group of people within a society that is different from the rest of that society. Similarly. To you, subculture means the same thing, except that it was created by teenagers or youth. And when we talk about subcultures, we usually refer to these youth subcultures. Punks, goth, emos, hip hops, and metalheads are well-known examples of music-based youth subcultures. There are also other interest-based or valued-based subcultures, such as tets, hippies, cosplayers, steampunk, skaters, lolitas, and so on. This does not imply that the music-based ones do not have their own value. They do. For instance, punk subcultures are very politically conscious and are, in short, anti-establishment. Many people perceive that subcultures are formed by like-minded people who discover that their value or lifestyle are distinctive from the mainstream. That's why subculture is usually more than just music, trends, or fashion. Their identity is also in the collective core values. By this definition. People may classify some communities as subcultures because their ideas differ from those perceived as the majority. For example, the LGBTQ+ community, the environmental activists, and the BDSM community are also subcultures. But as mentioned, most of the time the term subcultures refers to the youth subcultures, so it makes sense why people don't usually think of these as subcultures. In most cases, subcultures function well with the mainstream culture. As they only have a few distinguished traits, however, this term carries a very broad definition. Some people refer to the group that opposes or goes against the mainstream as a resistance subculture, while some others may set them apart as a counterculture. In the 60s, some may define hippies who protested against the Vietnam War as a group of the counterculture, as their idea back then could not coexist with their parents' culture. The early sociology study of subcultures was more concerned with delinquency and deviance, such as why certain groups of people join gangs. Chicago School Subculture Studies emphasized that the antisocial behavior of some gangs or subcultures stem from social issues rather than individuals. To highlight this point further, Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies, or CCCS, sociologists from the Birmingham School demonstrated that the people in subcultures, mostly the working class, act out with their own cultural norms to resist the main culture and strengthen their status. Nonetheless, these early studies have their limitation as they tended to study specific groups like male delinquents early or put too heavy focus on social class differentiation. From the late 20th century to the early 21st century, the term subculture was used to describe group of like-minded people. But why weren't there subcultures before that time? What about now? Where aren't there new youth subcultures emerging in this social media era? Before we get there, let's start by discussing why youth subcultures were not formed until the late 20th century. One. Teenager is a very new idea. Back then, when a child came of age, they went to work. Higher education was available only for the middle or upper class. The government did not mandate compulsory education in the UK and the US until the late 1800s. There wasn't an appropriate period fitting for teenagers to do some exploration until then. Two, there were serious political and economical issues like war and stagflation. I'm not saying that everything they were doing was not controversial at all, as there was the usage of drugs in some groups. But also, there were many values for teenagers to go against back then, like how hippies protested the Vietnam War through the famous slogan "Make Love, Not War," or how punks emerged from the desperation of young people in post-war Britain. Three, you need a mass media or mainstream for subcultures to be born. And the term mass media wasn't coined until the 1920s. 
True, the concept of mass media started when Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press, but the information had become rapidly widespread when people had access to magazine, newspapers, radio, and television. This does not only increase public awareness of the mass media, but it also makes these subcultures more accessible. But it is not so accessible that the subcultures idea can be widely recognized very quickly until the arrival of social media. Nowadays, God still exists. He must still exist. Activists are still protesting and trying to change specific ideas of the parent culture or the mainstream. So cultures are not going anywhere yet, but they are now just different. Due to the rise of the internet, it is easier to find more groups that you can identify with. It's not because most people agree with the mainstream now, but more like people have gained more acceptance and access to other stuff aside from the mainstream. The mass media is not the only way people consume information anymore. Also, the definition of the subculture is even more blurred as subcultures begin to be contributed into the mainstream. Like how cringing at your teen's emo appearance is common for many people, Jimmy Eat World's "Bleed American" an emo song has reached platinum status on the Billboard charts. Many stores commercialize subculture fashion, making them widely accessible. There are various gothic fashion styles inspired from the goth subculture, or like how the style of the '80s goth club scene dance. Has made its way into one of the most popular Netflix series, Wednesday Addams. In modern era, you need less effort to belong in a group. You don't need to go to a specific club or a specific corner of the street to experiment with as many ideas or styles as you want. Is more effortless, and that might be why the term aesthetic has gained its popularity. Unlike goths or punks who have their strong community. People who enjoy the academia or cottage core don't typically gather together physically. Likewise, it is way more typical for a person to be so immersed in two or three more aesthetic simultaneously. That's why in the next video, I'm going to talk more about aesthetic. What is it exactly? And well, is it a subculture 2.0? Hi, thank you for watching this. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm has an odd way of making something more popular, but I'm grateful that in the previous videos I've learned a lot of new things or read about some of your really cool lifestyle and fashion choices from your comments. So this time it would be awesome if you comment down about your subculture or the subculture you are interested in, what draws you to that particular subculture, and what makes it fascinating. Thanks again, and I hope to see you on the next journey.